Okay, great. It's, um, seven o'clock. We're gonna get this meeting started. Uh, James, do you mind calling roll? Sure. All right. Chair of the committee, Megan Metcalf. Here. James Winkleman. Here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mike Leander. Here. Kelly Wynant. Here. Councilor Kenyon. Here. And uh, Finance Director Colleen Shirley is online. Yep, I'm here. Wonderful. Thanks for being here, everybody. Um, seems we have a lot of public in the room. Do we have any public comment to start out? And if we do, please state your name uh, before your comments. I'll just state my name so you know who I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm her name. And, you know, I'm very interested. In, I've been involved in very many things in the community, so really interested to see how it all can work out for everyone in a balanced mode. Well, thank you for being here, everyone. Line possibly. Um, do we have anybody online? Wants to make comment? I'll take that as a no. Okay. Um, next thing on the agenda is approval of minutes. Um, I would like to make a motion that we approve last meeting's minutes. Anybody got a second? I'll second. Great. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any nays? All right. Minutes are approved. Today's the 13th. Okay, and then we've got guests today to speak to us about the usage of RTMP and TRT funds. Um, we've got Jenna uh, Cusimano with Lane County and Connor Nolan with um, Travel Lane County. Uh, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having us. I'm Jenna Cusimano. I'm currently serving as the interim manager for community and economic development at Lane County. Uh, I'm also uh, coordinate the um, processing of the rural tourism marketing program funds from the county, which are a portion of the county's transient lodging tax revenue, which is what we're discussing tonight. Well, hi, everyone. <clears throat> Yes, my name is Connor Nolan. I'm the Destination Development Manager with Travel Lane County. So my role is to help the uh, rural communities around the county enhance themselves as tourism destinations. So um tends to be a lot of project management and kind of community liaison between our team and the communities. And um, in regards to the rural tourism marketing um, program, typically I kind of act as just a high level advisor for some of the people trying to utilize the fund. So um happy to kind of help uh answer any questions. But Jenna's definitely the take take the lead on that one. But um yeah, happy to be here and you know do what we can to help out. So happy. Thanks. Thank you both for being here. I know that uh the committee here is is pretty new. We've only been um working as a committee um for the last not even a year yet. So there's always been questions around here um, about what exactly we can and can't use the funds for. So we're really looking for some clarity there just to make sure that we are staying in line with the rules. Um, I think it would be helpful, Jenna, if you could start us with, um, so we need to divide it out, obviously, into um, RTMP and TRT. So I would like to start with RTMP, as that is the more important uh, to our um, meeting tonight. But um, if you could give us kind of a, a an overview, and then uh, we'll let people on um, the committee ask questions. Sure. Um, James, did you by chance share the mission statement and project criteria for the RTMP funds? So I'll kind of briefly just go over that for um, the benefit of those of you in the room and online who maybe haven't seen it. So this is the guiding document that we provide all the communities within Lane County who receive the RTMP funds. Um, so ultimately, the purpose of those funds is to um, 
have a unified program around the usage as um, tourism product development in the rural areas of the county. And the focus on that is the objectives of attraction of visitors to rural communities, increasing the length of stay by visitors, countywide visitation, and um, return visits to rural and county communities. So there's specific criteria that we also list within that document to help guide the types of projects that we're recommending those funds be used for. Um, so one, that they would increase transient lodging tax revenues countywide. Uh, this would generally be measured by increasing overall revenues from room taxes through visitor stays and by increasing room tax revenues during the tourism shoulder season. So that's something that um, both we at the county as well as Connor and his team at Traveling County are really interested in seeing what we can do to increase the revenue in uh, the fall and early spring months. So that's what's considered the shoulder season. Um, increase the number of visits and the amount of time spent by visitors in rural Lane County, which Oak Ridge definitely falls within that, um, by approving the attractiveness of rural communities, the variety of such activities um, for that attractiveness would include expanded attractions, beautification projects, and property enhancement pro projects on public property, um, marketing for visitors, from surrounding states and peak season marketing to visitors around Oregon, to continue the development of regional marketing with local, state, and private agencies, uh, monitor potential, this is very specific, um, so it's not a requirement at all, but monitoring potential targets in Western Canada and other international markets to maintain flexibility uh, for areas you may want to market. Um, again, Traveling County is a really great partner in trying to help identify areas where you may want to um, specifically promote Oak Ridge to. So I would definitely look to them for that sort of um, advice. Develop, advertise, and package rural and county attractions and group tour business that encourage overnight stays and extended visits by developing group travel opportunities. This could include such things as recreational vehicles, bicycle, parks, and campground activities, fostering coordination between traveling county and rural tourism organizations to develop and package group travel tours, particularly as an extension of Metro Convention gatherings, providing incentives for return visits. Um, some examples provided are discounts on room rates for the following year, a mail schedule of activities for the next year, mailing postcards um, with thank you notes and welcome notes, and then the, um, the last item listed for these funds are to assist with rural area tourism staffing needs and providing training on hospitality and service excellence. So the objective for this point is to maintain a, rep a reputation for excellence in hospitality and service. So generally the overarching guidance for the use of these funds as we would, I think Connor would also agree to generally for the TR TLT funds, um, is that any expenditures should really have a fairly clear rationale and tie to heads and beds. So tourists that would be staying overnight in a way that makes sense to a reasonable person. So it's not something that would require a lengthy explanation as to how it makes sense and how something would incentivize tourism. It's something that would be relatively clear without an extremely detailed explanation, if that makes sense. Are there any specific questions to any of those objectives or criteria? We do have a question that we also got an Oak Ridge Rural Tourism Marketing Program that seems to have different objectives with this written system. So that document uh, was produced by my predecessor, uh, now our mayor, uh approximately 2020 i believe is it i believe that's correct I, don do you remember exactly when that came out so this does have more 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 language on providing seed funding and special events which this really doesn't this really doesn't address much as far as like seed money and starting new special events and things like that as much as this seems to have much more of an input, uh, 
interest in that. So I'm a little concerned. Gotcha. Well, a special event. So let's say I'm in Las Vegas and I bump into Taylor Swift and she agrees to put on a free concert in Oak Ridge for a charity organization. Uh, but there's still going to be some costs in putting that on security, whatever. Uh, is that a special event? And let's say she's going to do it for three days. Uh, would that be a special event that would bring tourists to our community and probably stay in hotels? Would, would that qualify it as something that would promote tourism and visitors to our rural community? You know, with me, or if we had a marathon here or or bike or races, something yeah. that with it was yeah that's kind of what I got out of this and to that the seed money with that we were supposed to try and have keep the community or us come up with events that we could seed that could start us going in these directions. And this doesn't really say that and this kind of does so I'm I get literally when we spend money and we don't have anything left for one and we spend our money on the other. So it seems to me that the city has outlined how they want us to use these funds. Um, but it's not necessarily the rules of the program, but this is how the city would like us to allocate funds. Um, am I correct in that understanding? That's yeah, that's my understanding. Um, John? Yeah, this this one that you're referring to was actually developed by um, three counselors on a little subcommittee. While the this committee was didn't have any members for a couple of years, so it was actually Mayor Folston, myself, and but I don't remember if I was a counselor or a citizen at the time. But anyway, it was Mayor Folston, myself, and. Um, Councillor Hollett, that um, th there used to be a document similar to this that was actually extremely vague. So we were looking for more of a way to direct this community or this committee, like how what the purpose of the committee is and how to use the TRT and RTMP funds. So we came up with this. And then the council approved it for this committee. And you're speaking about this one, John? This, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. this, it's, 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 uh -huh. Thank you. For anybody that has a copy of it, it's the Oak Ridge Rural Tourism Marketing Program. Right. Thank you. Yeah. It just seems that if, it's, it, if Oak Ridge wants a part of this, then we, then we need to, a pie chart, we need to make sure that all our money doesn't go one place and we don't put anything it was important enough for us to say that we needed seed money and we needed special events, then I think we need to save a slice of the pie for them. I, I will clarify that I think that all these kinds of events, like that Brock is doing or the marathons or the bike races that come into town, those are all what we would consider event, special events. Right, correct. Right. Do you consider concerts in the park special events? I would like to hold public questions. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. For a bit. Sure. Um, but before we move on from RTMP stuff, we'll open it up to public questions Absolutely. for a second. Let, yeah. yeah. Presenters. Um, yeah. And the seed money, and the, I just wanted to clarify, we're talking about the RTMP and TRT money. Correct. Okay. To use. So I think my question to our presenters, though, is that we don't have to fulfill all of these at all we just have to it has to be somewhat one of these basically needs to be addressed whenever we're assigning funds correct it's just a high level overview of the types of things that we would recommend using those dollars for okay so it really is just as long as we are promoting tourism within this town and that is a reasonable explanation yep. we're and, and again these funds do come from lane county's transient lodging tax so anything that would apply to the usage of Transient lodging tax funds would also apply to these RTMP funds. In other words, TRT funds and RTMP funds have the same general rules. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yes, Don? I have a question, uh, Jenna. So if we get presented with a, a budget for an event that wants to come to town, um, and the budget includes costs for like, Uh, business office supply type stuff, things that can't directly be linked towards marketing. Does that stuff qualify? I mean, again, this this is something that would go back to what I was saying earlier. It it should be expenditures that are relatively easy to understand as a way to incentivize tourism. Um, something else that James had brought up earlier today was uh, questions around how projects could be funded with the RTMP funds, whether uh, you always have to reimburse costs after the fact or, or if you could proactively fund events and things like that. So you could certainly do that. Um, I mean, I would just recommend in in that sort of instance, if someone is presenting a budget for an event that they want to put on and it has, you know, some line items that they're all in some way relatively clearly tied to the event itself and not just general office expenses. And so I think that's that's an area where it can be a bit fuzzy. It can be tricky to identify well, are these things that would be just general business expenses that they would need to pay for anyways, or are these expenses that are specifically to put on a special event or something similar? Gotcha. So if it's tied yeah. directly to the event. So for instance, the city requires anyone putting on an event on city property, such as a park, to have insurance for that event. They're required by the city to have that. So I assume that would be an eligible costs associated with the event? Same if it's, question. If it's specific event insurance for that one event and not their general business operating insurance. Yeah. Gotcha. So same thing with garbage service for the event, porta potties for the event, mm -hmm. which is required. Uh, security for the event required by the city for events of over 100 people. Uh, fencing, cones, all those things tied directly to the event would be eligible. Shuttle buses. Yeah, and they're and they're pretty easy to to see how that would tie in directly to an event. And where we get into to questions is when we're talking about things like, um, particularly like capital equipment. So we're talking like computers or printers or things that are general office supplies that would be used outside of the purview of a specific event. That doesn't necessarily have that clear rationale to justify the expenditure with the RTMP funds or TRT funds. Well, on that note, if if an event was like that was the entirety of their company was putting on an event, does that stuff still apply? If that's their only purpose for existing. Hmm. Like what would be an example? A computer, a laptop. Yeah, somebody who is like a... Um, I mean, again, town, so those items is, is put on, you know, set those events. items have a shelf life outside of the event. So I think that would definitely be questionable. It's not okay. something I would recommend funding. But again, we aren't necessarily the overseers of these line item expenditures. It's just our general recommendation of how you couldn't, shouldn't spend money. Okay. One, one big question I had is that for years, the city has funded special events. Let's say we give them $5,000. Some of those events then turn around and pay the rental fees for the city parks, which are required, $1,000 a day to rent the whole park. Can those event organizers use the money they receive from RTMP or TRT to then pay the city for those rental fees to hold the event. Is is that okay? Connor, I don't know if you have differing thoughts on that specifically. It is a cost that they're incurring to host this event, which could potentially be bringing in tourists. So I would not see that as an illegitimate expense. I would I wouldn't see an issue with that. 
Yeah, I was I was thinking the same. Like if I'm going as like an event operator shoes, if I just came to the city, I'm like, I want to host an event that's to draw people, uh, you know, to Oak Ridge. Uh, I assume that I'm going to have to pay some sort of rental fee to the city to rent the park for my event. Right. So I'm not I'm not kind of going through the mental math of like, OK, I'm taking funds from the city that go back to the city. Could that be problematic? But I'm just thinking purely like. I know this event I want to host is, is tourism centric and I'm trying to draw outside visitors to hopefully stay overnight and I have to pay insurance, whatever fees to get it accomplished. Um, I think because it's for this particular um, need to host an event, it, it seemed fine it, from my perspective. So, And I would just say it's up to you all if you want to develop guidance around fees and things like that, if you're okay with that, or if, or if that's something that you aren't okay with just being explicit and developing some language around the types of things that are appropriate uses of the funding. And with the focus being on, oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. That idea of taking the money from the RMP of the, our committee and then paying the city for the parks, basically, that's relieving the pressure off the parks budget. And so I don't see that it would be appropriate to pay for that because even though it's going back to the city, you're paying for services, they're having to pay for those services. So we get the event in there and the parks department doesn't get shorted on their budget. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, again, I don't I don't have an issue because it's, you know, this is an eligible use of the funds and it's simply moved to another area where um, those funds are technically being utilized, so. And then as far as heads and beds, do we need to require proof of that or is it just that we, you know, it could lead to heads and beds? Yep, it's just general guidance is that it seems like there could be some tourism generated from the endeavor that you're helping to fund utilizing the RTMP or the TRT funds. But you're defining tourism as people staying overnight, not necessarily visiting for the day. Well, it's both. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, with, within the the document that um, James had sent around that, that we provide for the RTMP program, it does talk about different types of visitors. Um, and I mean, again, visitors, regardless of whether they're staying for the day or staying for the night, they would be increasing um, their spend within the, the community, which is really the benefit to Oak Ridge, so. Okay, great. That's super helpful. Sorry, Connor, go ahead. No, it's 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 a good question too, because like it's tough it's tough to like track every you know uh, thing that a tourist may do, or, you know. Um, and if you're hosting an event, maybe that falls on whomever is requesting the funds to kind of have that plan in mind. Like, okay, if we're going to host an event, what other steps we're going to do to try to promote the businesses and lodges and other things that we can draw people to to encourage them to stay overnight. So, if it's maybe a, a concert that people come to. Uh, maybe you partner with local businesses to offer a discount to visitors who attend this concert through like a sign up fee and you kind of incentivize them to ensure that they stay overnight. So I think adding those extra layers to whatever kind of tourism package or thing you want to use these funds for kind of helps, you know, helps you lean closer to achieving the mission of of getting people to stay overnight. And I will just say in line with what Connor is talking about, if we're talking about, you know, the acronym Rural Tourism Marketing Program, we really want to make sure that there's a marketing element to any of the events or similar things that you're funding. Because if we're trying to incentivize tourists, tourists and visitors to the area, they need to find out about it somehow. So this mm -hmm. shouldn't just be a locals only event, which is also being funded with the TRT dollars. This is something that there's a way that people are going to find out about the event. Uh, that brings up a really good point. One thing that's always been questionable um, here is we do have several annual events that go on in town. Um, one's called a tree planting festival. It's pretty much mostly locals. However, there's, you know, there's people that lived here 20 years ago that come back for it or people that 
um, have grandchildren out of the area. They want them to come up and, and spend the day up here and go to the parade and stuff like that. Or we have a Christmas, um, what's it called? The Sugar Plum Festival or, well, that one actually doesn't. I did. But in other words, we have regular community events that are mostly community, but you know they will bring in some some outside, but they're not. I massive. would just and I would just encourage for events like that that if you're trying to utilize the RTMP or the T RT funds for those that there is some element of marketing um, associated with it, whether it's just through the traveling county events page or Facebook posts. It doesn't have to don't have to be costs associated with the marketing, but I think there should be efforts made to show that you're looking to get visitors attending these events and it's not just a locals only event or those who already know about it. Because again, these funds are for marketing an area and if you're not doing that, um, then it, it seems like it's kind of in the opposite purpose. Thank you. Um, so let's take a quick chat on, on TRT, since it seems like the funds are definitely coming, the, co coming from and used in the same similar way. Um, let's, if you could give us an overview on that. And then before we let them go, we'll do a little bit of public comment, um, or questions. Um, no, so I don't have a separate overview for TRT funds. It's okay. It's, it, it's pretty much used identically to the RTMP funds. So I wouldn't necessarily differentiate them unless the city of Oak Ridge differentiates the use of those funds. We do. So can we go over the, the, that real quick? The main difference I have noticed between TRT and RTMP funding is that with TRT funding, that money is allowed to be used for the beautification of public facilities and businesses, private businesses, and the community in general, whereas RTMP funds it allow shows. for beautification on public property only. It does not mention private property. So for instance, we have our TRT block grant program, which offers up to $1,000 in matching funds for businesses to uh, put fresh paint on their business so it looks nicer when people come to town. That's paid for out of TRT funds through the block grant program. We don't use RTMP funds because I've noticed on the RTMP fund criteria and objectives, it's only for beautification of public property. That's the only difference I've noticed. And that's really getting the minutia there. Well, it didn't change. So wasn't there a limit in how many years that you could apply for the RTP, which is different from the TRT? Can we have all things for questions? Yeah. We'll start. Yeah. It is. We'll get to okay. We'll get to that. So, um, so with TRT, are we allowed to, um, like, are we in allowed to use that to for private businesses? Is that? I'm not aware of any issues with using them for private businesses. Okay, would we be able to use RTMP for that same purpose? Um, so the document that I had read through for the RTMP funds, which again is through Lane County, that's not codified. So that's a general guiding document to help structure okay. the intent and usage of funds. But again, it's not something where we're following up with the communities that we're providing those funds to, to provide an accounting of how exactly those funds are used. So as long as you feel it's in line with the general intent of the document, I would not see an issue with funding uh, beautification projects for private businesses. Okay, that's helpful. Go yeah, ahead. so I only wanted to add to, to clarify is that the, the biggest difference that I have always felt existed between the two funds is that the way Oak Ridge kind of delineates it is that the TRT is mainly spent on improving the look of Oak Ridge, whether it be um, a private business or uh, they could use, and I think we did agree to use some of the funds to improve the uh, amphitheater at Greenwaters Park, 
you know, things like that. Projects that would, I know that Westboro uses theirs to paint their bridge ever so many years yeah. because that attracts people yeah. to the area. Yeah. And so that's, that's how, um, as long as I've been involved in this, the big difference is RTMP is more for like event, you know, promote events and then TRT for beautification and improvements. And is that how Oak Ridge wants it used or is that the overall guidelines? Um, that's Oak Ridge's perspective and it could certainly be changed. Okay. Because as I read the, the Oak Ridge guidance, this is the Oak Ridge guidance on TRT funds. It says to attract tourism, the Oak Ridge area, to develop recreational facility, to develop tourism facilities. So that would cover the amphitheater mm -hmm. and promote beautification of Oak Ridge and increase return tourist visits. So we've got some leeway between the two. Um, does anybody else on the committee have any more questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Renee, I know you had some questions, if you'd like to. Um, I just am asking. Um, oh, the oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, just real quick before um, we go into that, I wondered if uh, in order to not continue taking up their time, we would specifically use this time for questions for them and then. Yes, thank you for clarifying. Into the, you know, yes. stuff they don't need to be here for. Yes. Um, all right. I'm sorry. Renee. So I guess I could ask you, I mean, the question, we do concerts in the park and we typically have three concerts during the summer. Now this is free for everyone to come. So the fund that we actually make for it is selling of, our, of, of beer and, and wine and that which we try to get donated. But we also market it in different ways outside of Oak Ridge. So but that doesn't necessarily mean we have a lot of people spending the night. There would be some people, you know, like the bands and maybe people that follow the bands or people who came from pretty far. Or some people, you know, if you have it advertised, might already look at that as part of their travel plan if they're planning on traveling through the area um, because it happens over here. So it's kind of a thing that we keep posted and letting them know what our dates are. So. Uh, how would that fit in as you see it? It's a little bit different in regards to it's not it, it's not beautification. It is in some way because we're beautifying our park by having music and bringing people in for concerts. Seems like it would qualify as an event. Yeah, but that doesn't sound any different from what we've already discussed. So I think that would be in line if particularly if you're wanting to use funds to market those concerts. Mm -hmm. That would definitely be an eligible use. Okay. I, I'd also add um, using platforms that are digital are always kind of leaning in towards uh, outside markets because like I won't see, you know, I'm in Eugene, right? I won't see a flyer, but I might see a digital ad that would want to bring me to Oak Ridge. And also I like to think you got to bring people to town in the hopes that they'll stay, right? So, I mean, bringing them to the event is the first step and um, in the whole journey of them, you know, becoming overnight tourists. So I think, you know, for that reason too, it's, it's part of the first step of the mission of, of these, uh, grant funds to, to get them to stay overnight. So. Um, um Kevin. Okay. Yeah, Kevin Goldman here. I have a question for Jenna. Something that you said earlier, I just wanted to get clarity on is that you, you I thought I heard you say that funds could be distributed um, uh, pre or post event. Is that correct? Correct. There's no requirement on how the funds are distributed. All of the requirements and guidance is around what the funds are used for. Um, so in theory, if you are funding projects in advance, um, I mean, I would recommend at least requesting a high level budget and then perhaps some sort of follow up report on those use of funds just to have some uh, documentation on your end as, as to how the funds were used in case it ever comes up as an issue. But there's no issue with uh, giving funds up front. But currently under the city policy for the RTMP funds, it's reimbursement only. Is that the same for TRT? That is not the same for TRT. Okay. 
So that's where the difference is in regard proactive or after this time. Yes, thank you. Uh, Vanessa? Yeah, hi, Jenna and Connor. Thank you so much for being here, Vanessa Tharp. Um, I just am curious where you all stand. Um, I hear that, you know, this rural tourism marketing program from y'all at the county level is um, very open and broad and inclusive, which I absolutely love. However, um, when I look at the Oak Ridge RT and P1, it, it also is a policy and sounds to be like suggestions um, and, and preferences. I, if, is it my understanding that neither of these are like set in stone because uh, specifically on the Oak Ridge version that was made a couple years ago and I hear is up for change if this group sees fit, uh, limits the timeline that people can ask for money. So reoccurring events, one such event would be like the tree planting festival. Um, that's a heritage event, uh, but that's for, and it limits the amount. And then the others would be with a five-year eligibility for nonprofits or three years for profits. And so I just was curious um, if I read just your version that just is like, you could ask for longer times, but then the Oak Ridge version is not. So like, who who wins in that decision or who does, does that make sense and or is those yearly limits uh other communities are doing that too or not i'm just one of um, the so a couple of questions there so first i would say that um while we provide overarching guidance you know the city of the oak oak ridge is determining how those funds are utilized within your community um so i think you would have to apply to any of the guidelines produced by City of Oak Ridge. And so they can be more specific or restrictive than what Lane County is directing, um, as long as those restrictions and um, objectives are not outside of the general guidance and purview of what we provide for the use of funds. So it can, it can be, and it's um, not in opposition to the program to have a more restrictive uh, dedicated use of funds as long as it falls within the, the general purview of the guidance. Okay, and so Jenna, does that mean though, um, if like someone was doing a very similar event, let's say they were gonna do bike races in Oak Ridge and bike races in another town of Lane County and they were for profit, if they were coming to Oak Ridge, we would only give them three years of financial support and then another county if, or another town in our county who didn't have the Oak Ridge rules, they could get more because your broad county ones are, they don't have a yearly limit or a financial limit. Is that correct? correct? And Fair? I mean, I, I would just say I haven't been too, I haven't been too involved in other communities around the Lane, around Lane County um, and specifications around the usage of the funds, I would say. Oak Ridge is definitely um, more active in discussions around this. Okay, great. So we so we would want to keep that in mind if we don't want to push opportunities away. If that That's is something that has proven to be a barrier. <laughs> That's my assumption by what you shared with me. So, yeah, I'm just saying if that is proving to be a barrier to um, some people coming to Oak Ridge for events or things like that, it's something to look into, um, but it, it's not an issue with the program. Okay, and then is there anything about either of these, um, like I, you, you used a word uh, not codified and, you know, guidance and, and so, so because there is financial, like county dollars, like is there a, uh, I, I ran into situations where there's expectations or rules or guidance, but it's not like a law. And so I'm just curious, like, this is the guidance that you've given us, the statement and criteria, but there's no specific county or state law in the books that we, well, the so, that we put both of these up against each other. Is there another factor? Well, within, within lane code, we do have um, board approved language for how our transient lodging tax funds can be utilized. And so... 10% of our transient lodging tax funds, the county's portion, go to fund the rural tourism marketing program. 
and have this language, um, you know, overarching the program. So, you know, what I had described is referenced within code, um, but it's a percentage of our transient lodg lodging taxes that are used for this purpose. In other words, there are millions of dollars that come in from transient lodging taxes when people stay at hotels. 10% of those millions of dollars then get spread out to the local community. Cities. Yeah. And there, and we, we, we only get a limited number of dollars every year. This year, we got 31,000. As we all know, sometimes it takes 50,000, $100,000 to put on an event. So if we just went to first come, first serve, well, the very first event that applied for funds would get the entire $31,000. They're eligible, but then we'd have no money for anything else. And that's why Oak Ridge has made more restrictive rules or limits in general, how much you can get, how often you can get it, to try to spread that money out as far as possible. And I will say that what James is speaking to also speaks to the importance of looking at events throughout the year instead of just peak season. Um, so we do have an emphasis on having um, priorities for events within the shoulder season. So the time in which we generally have lower um, overnight visitors. So there's definitely an emphasis on, on having more than just peak season events. So I would say that that makes sense in, in line with that. And I just have one more question. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, then I think there was one online as well. So uh, are there any other cities in our county that um, Connor or Jenna, you would, if the group wants to just look at how other people are doing it or, you know, anything like that, that you would say is a good example or has support documents or, because I guess for me, it's like to be equitable and to make sure that the Oak Ridge priorities that are current and as we're moving forward are reflected in any additional uh, documentation and guidance that we create, whether it be, you know, X, Y, Z, I don't know. I just was curious if there's other places we could research and, and in the county that you might recommend. I mean, to be honest, Connor, I don't know if you're familiar with any of the policies or guidance that other rural communities are following. I haven't really dealt with any of the other rural communities and how they utilize their transient lodging tax revenue, the RTMP funds, other than I know that the city of Florence utilizes it for their event center. Um, but obviously that's very specific to them and their community. Um, I think any of the rural communities, whether it be Coburg or Cottage Grove, Crestfall, like I'm sure they would all be happy to talk about how they utilize their funds and and serve as a mentor of sorts if you're looking for that. I, I can speak to the McKenzie, although McKen the McKenzie is interesting because it since they're unincorporated, it goes to the chamber. So some of those, I guess, rules and policies and guidelines. Well, yeah, and that, that, that one's a little different because they go through a solicit solicitation process to get those funds. So they have to provide an upfront proposal on how to how they're planning to utilize the dollars and then they're awarded those funds. So whereas Oak Ridge and the other incorporated communities within Lane County um, are automatically awarded funds based on, you know, their percentage contributions from the prior years, uh, entities along the McKenzie have to apply for their funding. Do you think, uh, Jenna, do you think examples from the McKenzie of some of those like earmarked funds by like category are, are worth sharing? Or is that probably two apples and origins or oranges for, uh, for the um, group? I mean, so so really the, the funding all goes to the McKenzie River Chamber of Commerce and it has for a number of years now. Um, their proposal includes, you know, a number of the things like you're talking about with regard to events. They also have a focus on wayfinding and signage. Um, you could definitely reach out to them and uh, just just talk to them about, you know, what they do. But they also have uh, things with regard to like their website maintenance and updates and basically a lot of like just general chamber tourism related activities. I know we've had some questions from our chamber about how funds can be used. Um, they are looking to fund a position. Um, tourism. Tour, uh, director. A tourism director 
would that be applicable through our funds? Yep. So our, our guidance does provide an avenue in which it can be utilized for staffing. It does specify staffing with, you know, a specific priority for tourism and hospitality. So it should not just be a general um, business or networking support arm of the chamber. It should definitely be directed specifically towards tourism. Yes. And I, I spoke to Randy Dryling, who was the chamber president for a number of years, and he told me that for over 10 years, uh, approximately $10,000 of his salary was from the uh, RTMP funds, which seems to coordinate with uh, number seven on the page provided to us, which is assist with rural area tourism staffing needs. So the way I'm interpreting that, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Governor Connor, is that uh, if you had a chamber president that was paid, a staff member, and they're paid, let's say, $100,000 a year, some of that salary, let's say 10000 could come from RTMP because we would assume that at least 10% of their job is to assist with rural area tourism promotion. Yep, I would say as long as it generally seems to make sense and it's not, you know, 100% of their salary and they're also doing all of the business support um, and engagement that, you know, that that seems to be supported by the documentation. Uh, Chrissy, um, would you like to unmute and ask? Yeah, I just had a couple comments. Um, uh, the discussion around the RTMP policy that the city has, I wanted to give a little background on that so the group understood. Um, there was such a difficulty approving events. This was probably when I first started on council and it was ongoing before I started in 2019. Mayor Holston took on the project and um, before she resigned it wasn't finished so I ended up helping out with it at the tail end for the last few months but we did look at multiple other cities in fact I think the policy that's current was based heavily on Lowell Cottage Grove and Cresswell um, I don't know what research the other committee members did entirely but I know myself I called and spoke to multiple multiple rural communities and asked them, you know, what type of expenditures um, they do and, and looked at their policies. But I think Councillor Kenyon might remember that I think we went off of a lot of lulls. Part of the problem really was um, typically we only get under $20,000 a year for RTMP. And, you know, that is really hard to stretch that when you have bigger events. So we had to put limitations on the annual events that come through every year. And I'm just gonna throw this example out there. So sorry to put you on the spotlight, Brock. But for instance, if we want to fund larger events that are asking for more than $10,000, like the bus fare, we had to limit those other groups and set, you know, 1,000 and 3,000 and 5,000. We had to set those numbers because groups were asking for the same amount of money every single year. And it was limiting us to where we weren't able to bring in the new tourism groups that were coming in like the bus fare. And we really wanted to help support and promote those new events. So that's where those, those numbers come from. And we did heavily, heavily look at those numbers. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was the TRT funding. My understanding is this group works on the RTMP and isn't the TRT something that council um, works off of, Don? Not anymore, Chrissy. The council um, approved maybe six or eight months ago for the two committees to be combined. And this committee has been... Um, we haven't really tackled anything yet with TRT, but it, it does fall into our purview now. We did the, okay. the weight being sign and maps. Oh, so we have done. We did, we did do one little project, yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to mention mostly how that policy um, 
there was many years of work put into it. So I really don't see the council redoing that policy anytime soon. I mean, um, maybe some fine tuning, but we really had to put those limitations if we want to entice new groups coming into Oak Ridge. We have to we have to open up money for them. And, and I will point out that under the city policies, there is an exception for the RTMP limits. Right yes. at the bottom. There's yes. Exceptions yep. can be considered if an organization cannot hold the event without more funding than the exactly. Thousand. Yep. Exactly. All right. And um looks like Colleen, you've got a comment. I want to make sure that we are asking questions of um our guests and anything else that we can um discuss afterwards. So Colleen, if you have a question for our guests. I actually do. Um so my question is, from what I'm kind of gathering here, the RTMP is just an extension of TRT. Is that correct? So I feel like we're kind of dividing it when realistically, I feel like it's one, but we get extra because we're rural tourism. Is that correct? Or am I... Well, that, that is correct. So the Lane County Board of Commissioners had made a priority for a portion of Lane County's transient lodging tax revenues to be specifically dedicated towards supporting rural tourism marketing efforts. Okay. That was my question. Because like, yeah. from what I'm gathering, it seems like it's all TRT, but we get an additional because we're smaller rural county or city, sorry, and we're trying to get people out into our areas. So it, that's where the additional RTMP, it's not necessarily two different things to be used two different ways. Correct, okay. but unless, unless a community decides to utilize them in different ways. So that's that's up to you all to determine. Got it. Okay, thank you so much. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, Linda Hammer. Linda. Uh, and um, I have a question for Connor uh, or you can just make a comment. My question is over watching the tourism industry in Oak Ridge since 2010, uh, that there aren't a lot of packages being put together and uh, collaboration between businesses, say restaurants and hotels or events and all of the above. Um, and I'm wondering, is there a way that you might suggest to us to incentivize that and are there any funds that can be applied to that to diversify how we're um, expanding our tourism and overnight stage it's a good question um i don't know if i'm qualified to answer it uh completely but i think the best option uh for this is we do have a business or uh tourism business membership model um so uh, i'm housed in stakeholder relations and, and my boss and my team a lot of the services we provide are um packaged like marketing promotions uh for uh businesses uh within lane county and we've recently adjust our um our model to allow people uh to join uh without paying we do have paid tiers as well but the the concept is to um allow like businesses to be promoted on our website to have listings uh in which we uh draw uh outside eyeballs if you will to our website to give more exposure to local businesses and then we have kind of a business directory you know some a little bit like a chamber of commerce um to allow fellow uh tourism centric businesses to kind of potentially collaborate and interact with one another um, we have in the past before my time kind of uh, attempted to pilot like bookable products where we create these type of packages with businesses. Um, if we wanted to, let's say, uh, market to a group to um, experience a bike ride with one of our um, cycling operators. And, and maybe there also was a fellow lodging um, and restaurant group in, in, uh, in town that would want to um, partner on this bookable package. Um, so there's like a full itinerary that that visitors can utilize for a set fee. Um, those type of collaborations, uh, our, our team are always like receptive to working with when it comes to businesses in the, in, in the area. So um, a lot of it's just based on what 
you know, what uh, the council or the business community or the community at large um, want to hopefully accomplish. And we can potentially um, talk through a, a potential package or collaboration. So we're really receptive to that. Um, I know it's rather open-ended, but, you know, we're always uh, excited to work with people. And those are maybe some of the potential ways in which we can do that. So uh, all in all, feel free to contact us <laughs> if you want to work through those scenarios. And I'm sure we can uh, figure out ways to collaborate. Thanks. Yeah, it's just the idea is to expand the landscape of tourism here and work together and you get more by working. I, it might be, it's important to note that in the Oak Ridge RTMP funding application, there are incentives for doing just that. For instance, you get an extra five points if your event happens during the shoulder season. You get an extra 10 points if you are working with Travel Lane County to promote your event. You get an extra five points if you offer group packages for dieting and rep and whatever the grouping is. And then an additional 10 points if your event promotes return visits. So we've tried to build in some incentives, extra credit points for exactly those type of things. It just seemed like um, the businesses weren't taking advantage of it. So I don't know how that could be emphasized, but it's another opportunity you might want to do something about. Thank you. Okay. Um, unless anybody else has questions, I think we should probably... Dawn? I did have one last quick question for Jenna. Um, something that Colleen Shirley brought up a little bit ago regarding, I think if I understood her correctly, it sounded like other cities do not get the RTMP funds. Those are just for us because we're a small little community. Is that right? The, the 10 incorporated cities of rural Lane County all get Rural Tourism Marketing Program dollars. The cities that's of right. Eugene and Springfield do not. Okay. And that's because they have their own separate tax? Uh, well, it's because it's a, it's a priority of our board to support the rural communities of the county. Um, we feel like the, oh. the metro area has a lot of their own resources, and we really want to be able to lift up um, the rural communities. Okay. And those funds are distributed based on um, how much revenue they received from each of those 10 cities, like proportionally? Correct. So each community receives a proportional amount of that year's share of the Rural Tourism Marketing Program dollars. So we are in the midst of a bit of a transition with that program, just because um, as some or maybe all of you are aware, the transition of the data administration from the city of Eugene to the state of Oregon has caused some changes in our reporting level data. And so we're trying to ascertain how to match it up. Um, one of the reasons why you're seeing a larger than normal um, amount of rural tourism marketing program dollars this year is because we just didn't have enough time to try and get enough detail to match it up identically to the process we used before. So we are moving towards a process in which instead of relying on uh, a rolling five-year average of funds, we will be doing a direct year-to-year -year distribution. So for example, when we distribute the funds for the calendar year 2025 RTMP funds, it would in theory be based on your fiscal year $24 received instead of a five-year rolling average. And if that's a very complicated topic, if you want to get into that a little bit, I can, but that will be a future conversation coming before the Board of County Commissioners later in the year. And Jenna, is that something that will address like the impact, say, Oak Ridge is lost on tourism dollars due to natural disasters like wildfires and stuff like that? Or where can we let our well, thoughts well, so to be. Part of the reason for the bump up this year was to allow all the rural communities to build up a reserve, if you wish, in the event of once we move to the more direct year to year distribution of funds and you do have a slump in dollars for whatever reason, you could rely on your reserve. But so that's to say there's not necessarily going to be the same stability in funding source if there is a sharp decline in those dollars. 
and there's a great document provided by Traveling County uh, on their website, and I've also printed some copies down here that explains exactly where all the money goes. So, for instance, in 2022, $16.8 million countywide was collected from the TLT, the transit lodging tax. $3.6 million of that went to Traveling County, which helps promote uh, tourism to all of the cities in Lane County. And then there's a further breakdown of who gets what and why. But it would make sense that a city like Florence, has a lot of hotels, would get more money they, they've earned. All right. So we're about at an hour here. Um, and I know we have a ton um, to do with the next application that I'm sure a lot of people are here to talk about. So um, unless anybody has anything pressing, I think we should probably let our um, our guests go. Um, thank you so much for your time and uh, your expertise. We really appreciate it. I think you've provided a lot of clarity and answered a ton of questions. Um, and we so appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Thank you all for having us. Uh, it's always great to see such an engaged community, especially so late in the evening. So kudos to you all for showing up. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Okay. Moving on, we will discuss the bus fare application. Um, so again, we're going to start with discussion um, between um, the committee, and then we will open it up to um, questions that we have for our bus fare. Um, I didn't even call you guys. What words are escaping me right now? Uh, event, uh, event coordinators. Our event, our event coordinators. So yeah. thank you guys for being here, and thank you so much for the detailed information. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so. As everybody is aware, um, last year, the bus fair um, was granted a special event exception, um, and I believe they were granted $10,000. Is that correct? $12,500. $12,500. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, they are requesting $15,000. Um, so obviously there is um, the Oak Ridge rules that we have, um, but they are requesting another special exception. So it is upon us to um, determine if we wish to grant that or not. Um, I feel like I should start out by saying that I do have a potential um, conflict of interest as I did uh, volunteer at the bus fair. So just full transparency there. Um, if anybody else would like to disclose. I also volunteered at the event, as I do for most events. But, um, and just to clarify, yeah. you, I, I received you no know, direct money into my pocket. And I, and that I did not, yeah. It was just volunteering, so. You did receive high fives. I did receive lots of high fives, mm -hmm. but not $5 bills with hands. <laughs> All right. Um... One of the questions we came up with last year at the beer festival too was the part of the Oak Ridge thing that says that eventually we're expecting groups to become self-sustaining. And we have been funding the bus fare pretty heavily. And is there a point you see any point where we become self-sustaining where we can start following the road funding? So this is what as seed money, we aren't supposed to just be doing this every year. We're supposed to get you guys on. Kelly, I'd like to hold questions to them. Let's discuss internally and then and then we'll bring them into the discussion. Um, so one thing I would like to point out on that is that um the bus fair has brought a lot of money into the community, um, and they provided us um some numbers on that. And we are at risk of losing that because they are getting other offers. Um, and so it's not necessarily so much that they are self-sustaining, but we are in competition to keep them in this town is something that I think that we should all keep in mind. Oops. Go ahead. Well, after reading that, uh, you are getting, you're the person that 
you yeah. are getting a pretty good deal to move out of the town, but you do have a history here, and you've built up the clientele based on that history. Um, I can see, though, where you're coming from with the money that you're requesting, but as you just heard about the limitations that we have here with funding every year, um, if we had the budget and other, not other events, it would be kind of a no-brainer for the $15,000 from my point of view to keep the event staying here and running it. <clears throat> I'm not in charge of the committee, thank God. <laughs> but uh, I think we need to also take a look at the money that uh, we have to put out and what's our anticipated needs this coming year. I think that's a good point. So do we have the numbers of what we currently have, what we've currently given out, and what we gave out last year so that we know where we're at? Well, last year, I believe we received $19,000 in RTMP funds. And we spent all of it before the year was out. We ran out of money. Um, but like you said, we could easily give out all that money within a month if we wanted to. Um, the TRT money, we currently have about $20,000. And Colleen, correct me if I'm wrong. Currently have about $20,000, but every three months, we get a little more than $2,000 additional money replenish that. The RTMP money just comes in one big chunk towards the end of the year for the next calendar year. And where is our current balance sitting for RTMP funds? We've given out some. We've got, given out some. I think it's roughly 28,000. Uh, does that sound right to you, Colleen? I, I yeah, I think so, but I didn't actually, I should have probably had that together, but I don't, I apologize. But I think okay. we haven't spent much on that yet since we got that big chunk. Okay, and last year, did we use any TRT dollars um, to help fund or did all of the 12.5 come out of RTMP? For the bus fare? Yes, I'm sorry. I believe it was split up between the two. I could look at that. Um, but okay. I didn't walk in. Maybe a few with you. Oh, good. Oh, that would be great. Um, so, it's in the email I gave to James. And oh. that's, yeah, it's, sorry, on the application, I actually gave to you guys. It's the very last page. Oh, well, I guess I didn't know what it looks like in your guys in this far as uh, the last page, but it breaks down money that's given in 2019, money that's given in 2020, money that was given in uh, 2023. Um, so it specifies how much came out of the RTMP fund and how much came out of the TFT fund. Okay, great. So it's this one. And you could share a yes. screen if you want. Um, I don't have that one. I can pull that up if you would like me to put it up on screen and do that. If that is helpful. Oh, I see. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just to clarify, too, uh, while we did get some funds in 2020, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we had to postpone that. Mm -hmm. So we were only we were awarded a much higher amount, um, what that amount was, but we were only given the amount that we spent on marketing dollars and advertising until we had to postpone the event. Correct. It's re reimbursable. So. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you for that information. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the question before us is, uh, do we want to continue, um, funding outside of, um, you know, the normal, normal limits to keep this event in this town, I'd, I'd like to hear um, from our other committee members uh, how everybody's feeling about this. My question is, if we did this, what's the, what funding do we have for the rest of the year? So, I mean, it, that, just in general, I mean, not the exact dollar amount, 
because if we're like by this one event maxing out everything then so with the numbers mm -hmm. they were just giving us we would have thirteen thousand dollars left in trt though we get about two thousand every uh, every three months every three months so we get another uh eight ten months we got some five more we got about ten thousand dollars more coming well, and i would split and that's what they're requesting is that we split um and so um and then we would have twenty one thousand left in rtmp funds um approximately um, for the year although we did just hear that we're going to be on a yearly base um and should we have more wildfires this year as tends to occur we might not have the same level of funding so i would hope that we would try and keep a little bit of reserve since we are now not being given a buffer from the, the county what do you what do you mean by split it so we're allowed to use TRT funds and RTMP funds okay. to fund this event. So we would take some out of each. Each. Um, I I just I am concerned when I got on this committee last year. Um, There's a lot of local people with good ideas and some new events and things that we need to bring to the table. And it seems like by March we're broke because we funded three or four big events. And I'm I'm just I'm, I. I really love the bus fair. I really love everything that's going on, but I'm so worried that, that little things like the concerts at, at the park and things that people want to develop new into our community are not there. Unless they get here like next month, they're not gonna get anything. Go ahead, Don. Um, I, would, I would disagree with the idea that we would run out of funds by March of every year because that hasn't happened for a few years since we switched to this. I don't know if you remember, but last year in August, when the Kagan cask applied, we did agree to give them the last bit of what we had in our fund. That was August, not March. So all and the other yeah, events. Yeah, like we've you. already got three big projects in front of us. And I don't want to run out in August either. I, I want to have money for people to do things in the fall. I want people in our community to bring new people in. It, it, if we... We keep doing the same thing. We're not bringing a new group of people in. We're we're just kind of doing the same thing and painting it a different color and saying it's the same thing. It's better, but let's we need some new stuff. I feel like the bus fair does a good job of bringing in new people every year. Like they advertise nationally, I, which a lot of our and I agree. I love the bus fair. I think it's super cool. But this, when you're asking my concerns, my yeah. concerns are that. I know a lot of people I've talked to in the community that want to start events and they don't know how, they don't know how to get funding. And by the time they fight their way through the paperwork, there's not a lot of meat. And so I, I want to set some stuff aside for them and I don't know how to do it. I would actually agree with that. And especially since what you just brought up that she told us that this year we have kind of quite a bit more than we have in previous years. And that's because of the way they're changing their program of handing out money and she gave the idea to maybe consider setting aside a portion of our funds to hold us through if if uh, we have a, a season that where events are shortened due to wildfires etc I like that idea of setting setting aside some funds and that would absolutely be something this committee should discuss and set up well, and I, I'll, I'll remind folks that money in RTMP and TRT has to stay in those accounts. It has to be separate. So by default, we save the money. In other words, we can't take half the RTMP money and give it to the police department because they went over their budget. Can't do that. So it's already set up that it's, is that as long as we don't give it away, it's going to stay and carry over to the next year. I also want to point out that, that this committee is welcome to make whatever recommendation they want to city council. So if you want to say, let's give them 10,000 and you know 25% of it comes from RTMP, 75 from TRT, you can do that. You could also make a recommendation uh, simpler saying, we recommend the city council award up to $12,000 
from the two funds in whatever way the council seems fit. You don't have to make a specific recommendation. You're totally welcome to, but you, you don't have to break it down. I also want to point out that there is a third option that Brock points out in his letter here is if you want to save some of the RT and PTRT money, another tool that could be used are park rental fee waivers. Right now, the bus fare uh, has to pay the city $7,700 in park rental fees. That's to rent Greenwaters Park. It's to rent uh, two lots in the uh, industrial park, for the extra parking. Uh, so, so those could be waived. And so that's, but that means that the park fund wouldn't get that money. Because if, if they have to pay their full 7,700, all of that money, actually most of it goes back to the park fund, the OIP rentals would actually go back to the OIP, but that's just a few hundred of that 7,700, but. But if we gave them $15,000, 7,700 would directly go back into the city. Yeah, they have, right now they're on the hook. It would really only be, I understand it's going to a different fund, but we would be funding our city $7,700. So we net out of pocket the 7,300. Correct, but we would still be out of fifteen thousand dollars in RT and PTRT money, right. which we couldn't recover. Yeah, my only thought about that is I remember the last time the uh, mayor had a problem with uh, what we were saying because he had a problem with our departments always having their fees waiver, and they were having trouble with their operating budget because of it. That's why I brought up the point of the seventy five hundred or whatever was really going from one hand to the other, but that was keeping the parks department budget balanced. Right now, given the opposition that I saw, do you think that uh, this is a much bigger event? Do you think that uh, that uh, the city council would go for that by waiving the department? I, I don't want to speculate on that, but we can look at the past. And, and in the past, they gave $12,000 last year. So they, they did go up above the normal threshold. But, but, but again, if this money is for beautification of the city and 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 cleaning up the community, if we're forcing our parks department to work on $7,700 less budget to clean and take out garbage and replant, um, that $7,700 would fill this bill as well. Go ahead, Don. So I just want to point out there's two things that can happen with fee waivers, and both have happened in multiple instances. One is the council could grant a fee waiver that simply means the park does not collect any money when they would have otherwise. Another way that we've done multiple fee waivers is we've said, we'll grant this organization a fee waiver, but we want to pull the money from the RTMP fund because it qualifies to pay the park for their, you know, to, in other words, so that the fees go into the park fund. Both have happened and those are completely up to council only. Right. So, um, but but certainly this committee could recommend well, let's do it one way this. or another. Hold on one second, we're staying within committee. We'll open it up. What I was saying about what you're saying is like right now we're faced with the with the bus thing, but uh, looking at the year as a total, uh, maybe what we should do is make the goal of X amount of dollars per month throughout the year that we want to spread between the projects, and then once we meet that monthly goal, then we'll take a, uh, the route. Well, of either like asking for park waiver fees or that type of thing to help out. Um, I think it'd be really helpful if we knew when we had applications and when we allocated money and when we didn't allocate money uh, in the last few years so that we have a better idea of how to budget. Um, do we have that information available? Oh, Colleen's got a hand raised. Colleen. We do. Actually, um, Linda uh, spent hours putting this information together for us. And 
Rick, don't we have a spreadsheet somewhere with that? I don't know if he's on here right now. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, we do. It's on the park, Parks uh, Google Drive. Okay. So, yeah, we have a spreadsheet that we could share um, that Linda came in and volunteered and spent hours kind of putting this all together and what what were fee waivers, what were fee waivers that actually went back to the parks, what were RTMP, what were TRT, and all of that stuff. So we do have a whole spreadsheet. Um, so, yeah. And I have another question for Brock, if I can just ask real quick. Um, I know that last year um, we were going to go down to the bus fair, um, but we did not realize that there was a fee associated with going. Um, I believe it was $25 for citizens for the city of Oak Ridge. So um, I was just wondering if you ever brought, if you, if you ever told if everybody what you ended up making um, from the bus fair off of people paying to come in. Yeah, so let me correct you. It was not 25. Uh, Oak Ridge citizens were allowed, as West were, were allowed to get a 15. We offered a discount. The uh, the day of ticket prices was $20. Um, no money was made uh, last year. I have not, and I'll say this on the public record, I have not been able to pay myself at all, uh, nor has Heidi, my partner. Um, so we have not paid ourselves. Vanessa, uh, we did pay as an event coordinator to help us uh, manage the event. Uh, but no money has been made on the bus fare, so to say. It's uh, it's more or less in the in the red. Okay, thank you. That was in And I do have the, the historical data from 2019 to 2023 for TRT and RTMT expenditures. Do we have it broken down by month? No, and, and that's so hard to qualify because some people get their applications in early because they're well-organized. Some people get their applications in really late um but still it would be nice to know how the funds are spread across the year since the concern is keeping money um for funds that come or requests that come in later um so i think that could be really helpful to this discussion that spreadsheet has all the dates of the events um, um so that would i don't know if that would be helpful if that's i know it's different than when they ask for the money but it does have all the dates of the events I think that would be helpful. Um, can we get that spreadsheet? Can I will, send that? I'll go grab it and send it over. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, do you want to send that to James and he can distribute? To, oh, you know, you're on the uh, email with all of us. You have everybody's. Okay, I'll send it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, on that note, I wonder if we could consider maybe holding a special meeting another night to address uh, finishing up on this particular project so that we all do have time to review that information and maybe consider making a plan for the year based on historical. I just things. want to point out you have two major asks, one even larger than this, ready to go for your next meeting. You have a 20 plus thousand dollar request ready to go and you have a fourteen thousand dollar request ready to go at the next meeting. Okay. So you're welcome to take on all of those plus whatever else comes. In. Those are just the ones I've received. Can you share with us what those are? Uh, yes. Uh, the uh, first annual brand new uh, Bigfoot Festival, Sasquatch Festival, and the Chamber of Commerce uh, request, which I believe this committee's already seen. But we delayed. The last, but we delayed yeah. that. He was supposed to break it down into. Separate projects then correct. And the chamber is is uh waiting to see what transpired at this meeting. They wanted to hear the presentation to see what was um appropriate and not. So. Well, just between these three events, that's well over 40 grand. Yeah. So we uh, definitely correct. So that's that's almost all of our money. Hmm? Yeah. That's almost all of our money. Well. Yeah, that's my point. Um, I think that your request would have to be, uh, unless we decide to cut everybody else out of the money from the TRT, RTMP program by spending the three events that we have in the queue, uh, we need to look at maybe a split between the funds that we have and what you were saying about 
getting the park waivers so that they're not having to put out the cash for that. Uh, because what I see happening is if we fund this and then we don't fund the others, then we'll have to say why. And then on top of that, we'll still be out and we'll end up at the last half of the year just scraping by over the last couple of months. And if you want to promote newer people that are just starting out events, we have to have some funds to do that with. So that's where I'm kind of, I'm not trying to set a dollar amount. I'm asking like, what's practical for us to set? Do we have these three big events? How do we take care of them? And then with the rest of the money, as a general rule, I'm not going to say we allocate a thousand dollars, but we try to say, okay, each month we'd like to keep it limited so that we. That's where I'm coming from. Not like a hard rule. Sure. Um, my question to you guys is: When do you need to make decisions by as to where your event is going to be in order to? Um, I mean, we're we're committed to Oak Ridge this year. Absolutely. Okay. You know, if we we're going to hold it here, even if that puts us in the red, you know, more. Um, so the really challenging part of putting on an event in Oak Ridge that brings in over a thousand people is where do you park these people? None of our venue locations that we have in the city have ample parking for it. So that incurs an enormous amount of cost. The shuttle service alone that we pay to get people from the parking lot of the OIP to Greenwaters is $5,000. Um, and then we have other costs on top of that. The insurance companies like to ding you because now you're not just one location of Greenwaters. Now you've got two other satellite locations and they like to jack up the rates on you. So the challenging part for us in our type of event where it's grown into is the amenities. We don't have the parking. We we're struggling to actually get people to the event. So um, we will be here to answer your questions. We will be here in Oak Ridge this year, absolutely. Okay. Um, depending on the decisions that are made this year within your, your committee and council is going to have an effect on how we have to look at our event moving forward to make sure that it can not save itself. That makes sense to me. I would say one positive for you guys especially is this is like the first time that we've gotten all the information we're supposed to get back and we have our return oh. on investment and we know exactly how much money. So that's if I was to come me. up with three different <laughs> if I had to come up with three different projects I had to fund. This one actually has facts with it. It tells me what it did. It tells me what you've done. It tells me the number of people who are here, all the things we've asked for. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. And you know, if if I haven't made it uh clear, I'm trying to set an example. And and I say it on the most effective way to the other events that are going on town. Um, this is an example of how you as an event can show what the return on investment is. Um, take a few of our examples, how we collect surveys, how we cross-reference our data from Travel Oregon to give you guys an idea how much money was brought into town from our event. So, and if, for instance, on the beer festival, and I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but there's a, well, how the heck are we supposed to know how many people are here? Well, how are we supposed to do this? Well, you <laughs> use this as an example. Yeah. And I believe that that would piggyback on the fact that we hire an actual event planner. That is my role. I've worked with Oracle, the Gates Foundation, Amazon, AWS. I've done events for 60,000 people. To me, that shows the credibility and belief that Brock has for this event and for the bus fair. And while I am always there, I donate my time and help run the tree planning festival committee. I'm the president there. Um, I believe that this is to truly, if you want to see how other communities are attracting, you have to hire professionals, let people who are experts in what they are do that. And so I think that piggybacks um, to the detailed level of, uh, and Brock has done these reports every year, they're online, it's public, it's transparent. And I just continue to applaud that because it's like, it's, it's one reason I said, heck yes, I would love to work with you. And shopping local, okay. like hiring who lives here. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm, I'm Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, yeah, I want I want to say a few things. Uh, first of all, I also am very grateful and impressed with uh, you know the thoroughness of uh, of of you know what the, the materials you've given. Yes, it's uh, present presents it very well. Uh, 
Uh, num number two is I, w I r really would like the bus fare to stay. I mean, it's one of, you know, uh, in my mind, um, and happily so, it's identified with Oak Ridge. You know, it's like Cottage Grove. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, we're, we got the be we got the beauty spot. We right do. Um, yeah. uh, the third thing is that I think there's a growing uh, pressure uh, to uh, pay for the, um, the the you know the park fees and the uh, uh, that uh, the, the council is is it's not happening yet. I mean we could we 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 could they might do it, but this might be the time that they would uh, that they would balk. Uh, so I think that uh, you know uh, if we're going to kind of get on board with the direction that it seems to be going right now from watching you know we every week or every couple of weeks watching the city council meeting is that uh, there's going to be a lot more pressure to like uh, uh, not to waive uh, uh, fees or not to waive too many. And that's why I kind of come up with this, what I thought was a good solution. You know, how do we still fund our parks? Um, because, you know, as somebody that walks their dog in the parks every day, you know, it's I, I'd like to see the money that we can put back into it. I'd like to see the amphitheater continually be, you know, improved upon. Um, I'd like to see a water fountain near the amphitheater for crying out. <laughs> um, so that was why the, the first option that I came up with felt like it kind of resolved these these two issues, you know, uh, helping us with the issue of the parks don't have the amenities that we need to put on an event like the bus fair, where it's grown to and where it's going to continue to grow. Um, and then how do we put money back into our parks? Um, so that's where that first option came from and that's what i'm pushing for and hoping for but obviously you guys are the ones that make these decisions or would make a recommendation to council um, based upon it so um and we do have some some ideas for shoulder season um, and bringing in people for workshops yeah, this is something we have plans for down the road so um as we are growing the bus fare, we're learning that people really want the educational aspect. When we started the event, it started as, hey, let's have a car show, but it's buses. <laughs> you know, it was only one day in 2019. And then the feedback that we got from a lot of the attendees was they wanted more of the people that were speaking up on stage and giving information about buses and how to get into it. Right. So last year we decided, well, let's do a full day of educational seminars that's going to boost our, our lodging, you know, in town with people on um, overnight stays. And we got a huge response from it to where we are literally talking about in 2025, adding another whole day of educational seminars because we can't cover all the topics that people want in one day. So with that, we've also had the idea, kind of a five-year plan, that during the shoulder seasons, how do we offer workshops, actual like week-long workshops? So you have to start out by weekends where people come into town, maybe even with their buses if they're in the middle of a project and we keep them in town, walk them through how to install solar, how to do a layout, how to do their plumbing in it, where they're here during those times of the year that we aren't getting as many tourists. Have you thought of a venue? Yes, that's also in the five-year plan, but uh, it it's uh, it's something I'm still working through. You know, um, Financially, I think I would have to purchase something uh, in order to have a venue that would offer that type of space here in town. And uh, if the bus fare is continually in the red right now. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there uh, I'm not familiar with what's built out in the industrial park. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that like the experimental airplane people, mm -hmm. uh, they have seminars and such where they do demonstrations in hangars and mm -hmm. stuff. And I was wondering when you were saying about trying to find a venue, couldn't you use one of the buildings that's out there because you're just doing an instructional type of thing? Sure. I, the I parking must... would be there too for them also. Yeah, unless I'm mistaken, I don't believe there's anything that's available at the OIP that's Correct. an empty building. It's all privately owned. All the buildings, I think, out there are privately owned. Well, great idea. Yeah. If somebody wants yeah. to get some rent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Uh, places like, you know, my only thought about what you just said about that seminars, it'd be great because it could be an ongoing thing yes. all year round. 
and you don't need a huge space that where you do need is a place for their parking and for the demonstration of whatever it is you're doing. So, right. you know, you, I would say that would be a, something you want to look at maybe rather than purchasing right now with interest rates, maybe doing it with a rental type thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Finding the venue space is kind of always the, the tricky part from what I found here, but um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, something we want to dig into deeper, but I can only fight one battle at a time. And right now that, that one battle that's the important one is putting on the event in June, which is sneaking up pretty quick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Oh yeah. I, you know, uh, what, uh, what we were just sent there by, uh, by Colleen um, and Dawn's suggestion that uh, we, we consider uh, in, uh, having a, taking that material, looking at it and, you know, coming to a kind of a, a sense for each of us about how much we want to leave aside, given that we're going to have a year to year basis and that we might need, you know, extra funds that we don't want to run out of funds and uh, whether or whether we, we want to uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, push through this evening and, and, uh, uh, so, I mean, that's, uh, that I think that would be, yeah. Uh, that's probably our next discussion, perhaps. Yeah, I don't feel like we have the information we need to make decisions for you tonight, um, in all fairness to everybody else that is applying. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that we should spend this time here uh, while we have them to ask any questions. Um, obviously, they can come back next time. But if there's anything that you need to know while we have them here so that we can all go back and review and then um, hopefully next meeting will um, which it's going to be a long one um but we'll have a better sense next meeting once we have the other applications of um what exactly they're asking for if we agree with what they're asking for and so i don't know that we will actually be able to um i mean I, we'll be there's gonna be a lot of discussions next month yes yeah i was just gonna say uh it would be probably worth uh, everybody's time to ask us all of our questions now because there is something that Vanessa and I may be out of town of in March for the next March meeting um, to promote the bus fair. Okay. The, isn't that the governor's conference? Yes, I yeah. have already been accepted to the Oregon governor's conference on tourism. I work with Travel Oregon. I work with Travel Oregon County. So I will be in Salem representing our community and the bus fair and then the other events we do from concerts in the park to all kinds of fun stuff at that event. So Okay. Um, would use our time now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> answer support. And I guess one question is, you know, what method will uh, this committee like evaluate the success of events? You know, um, because if there's five events and everyone is the money divided equal to all, is it by who's showing documentation, who's investing? You know, I'm all for again believing in new events and trying them out, but if they're coming to you in August to put on an event in September, that doesn't tell me that they've planned that far ahead. Or if they don't have all the answers uh, to the questions you've asked filled out like we do, and thank you for that. Again, that's all brought to 110%. Um, then that that would rock way raise flags for me. Um, so I'm just curious, as an event, like as your committee, is there anything established of how you're measuring successful events? Or perhaps that will be part of your very long next meeting discussion. That's definitely part of our discussions. Um, obviously, you've seen the, the documents that we have when we had somebody in kind of explaining rules to us. And we're just kind of getting our, our feet under our, you know, under us on this to figure out how to best serve our community. Sure. I don't know if it would um, make sense to offer this suggestion, but um, if we have people in town that have good ideas on different events and things like that, um, so you guys are able to plan your budget, perhaps setting a deadline sometime at the beginning of the year for applications. Would be <laughs> I, I was we have one of those. <laughs> I was actually hoping that we could, I, like, I don't know in the community that people know how to go through the process and could we have whether it's a suggestion box or a, or something so that people can go, hey, can I bring this to the council kind of thing? Don? Um, well, in the past, over the years, there used to be, for a lot of years, there used to be a supposed hard, fast March 1st, everybody has to have their applications in, and then the TRT or RTMP committee would review them all, 
and make a big plan for the whole year. But every single year, and I kid you not, every single year, even though some events happen every year in Oak Ridge, someone would come late, someone would come six months early, someone would show up in June and say, I want to put on an event. And I had no idea that you guys had this program. So it's constantly not working. The, and so we decided the committee that didn't exist and where the counselors got together and made this program that maybe it should be open all year long so that nobody has to feel like if they decide in June that they want to do something in, in September, that they have to wait till the following March and, and do it the following September. You know what I mean? Like we shouldn't be restricting like that. And then also um, just because it's inevitable that I mean, we got applications last year after the event was already done on two occasions where they were asking for money to support the event they already had. So there's just, it's impossible to meet the needs of everybody. And the most kind of um, open idea was to leave it without borders and not put a restriction on when the application had to be in by. But that does but that puts, us to it, save some funds. It puts the onerous on us as a committee to figure out, okay, well, we've got, you know, 10, 10 regular annual events. How do we make sure they all get something and leave room for new events? That's on us. So just something we got to work through. Um, does any Anybody have more questions for Brock and Vanessa? I, I just want to present a very good package as far as that's concerned. Oh, man. Thank you. Oh. Appreciate it, James. Yeah, just, just you know, in, in case we uh, we decide, right, soon, whether we'll, we'll have a special meeting, perhaps we ought to ask uh, our schedule. So our next meeting is scheduled for March 12th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which means it, uh, it would then go to city council for the final decision on March 21st. That's our current schedule. I see. Committee meeting on March 12th. City council March 21st. Would be the schedule. And and what if we were to uh, ask for a, a special meeting? I can look at uh, dates thanks. right now. Thank you. I would be open to a special meeting. Yeah. Would you guys? This is a very, you know, this is, a, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of new. I just uh, last year, you know, started, and this is the first time there's any real. Do you want me yeah. to consider next week? I am out of town next week. Um, How about the last week of February? The last week of February. Okay, so last week of February. We could do Monday the 26th at 7 p.m. I'm on a plane. Okay. Um, Tuesday is that, unavailable for public safety. The 26th says audit committee. Correct. We could do it at 7 p.m. The audit committee is at 5 p.m. Oh, okay. Good. But our chair is on a plane. Public safety committee does... Con Conflict. So Wednesday the 28th is available. Wednesday the 28th. Anybody have a on the 28th? Is that hard for you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Salem, I have a this conference in Salem on Thursday 29th. Friday, that's Friday Art Walk, not on the weekends. Yeah, we usually don't do Fridays, any committees. Did you say there's something on the 27th Tuesday? Yes, that is Planning Commission. Oh, okay. Or no, Public Safety Committee. Oh, okay. So now I'm looking at Monday, March 4th is the next available date. There is a WAC subcommittee advisory at 5.30. Uh, that should get out by 7 p.m. So we could do Monday, uh, March 4th at 7 p.m. Is there an early, like, do we have a 6 p.m. somewhere? Because I think these, like, you know, I think we'll be a two to three hour meeting. Uh, for that. Was anybody having a conflict on the 26th? 
Yeah. Oh, you were. Yeah. Okay. Wednesday, March 6th, would be available. At 6 p.m.? Mm -hmm. If I may ask, when when uh, are you sure going I see a off on in, that in day. March? Is it later in March? March 6th? Would oh, you be available? At, at that's my... Uh, would you like me to be available? Oh, but he works. I, so, I, I personally would. Sure. Yeah, I think it would be great if you yeah. guys were here through yeah, the, the discussion. Uh, um, of March like 4th through the 7th, I'm I'm here. So I could I put some on my calendar if there's a date that works for everybody. Time. Yeah. So you're saying the six that six p.m. is available? Mm -hmm. March Anybody have conflicts? March six at six p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, I just might be a little late. I'm going to be leaving Albany at five. So okay. But I'll be. I'll come here. Okay. So six p.m. on the sixth. I I would point out though. Um, I don't have any questions only because I'm familiar with what you guys do for several years and I love your packet. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, that's great. it's up to everyone else if they feel like they need you for questions that day, but I feel like we've had the opportunity today and we haven't really needed any new stuff, do we? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be here. I I don't want you to feel like you have to. Yeah, but I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I um, have the information. It's your guys' thought. Uh, Mike, if you if you had more questions, you? you feel like would be. Uh, no, uh, no, I, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with, with, with Westville and, and yeah. uh, uh, as it, as it now is in Oak Ridge, Oregon. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, I think we would rather be here and y'all not need us than you need us, yeah. or there's misinformation, which a few yeah, times I, we had to clarify yes. things yeah. uh, that, that I think helped our causes. So yeah. I think we will do everything in our power to be here. Yeah. I got them a calendar and free, so I'm, yeah. I'll just okay. give the kids some chicken nuggets and they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and we can kind of, um, if we decided that we wanted to, you know, have... Um, I don't know if we needed an hour or something to ourselves, and then you guys didn't have to be here throughout the entire thing. Sure. Um, this, yes. This, if I need to know what you want me to do about the other applications that are coming in, because right now they are anticipating to come at the regularly scheduled committee meeting, which is on March 12th at 7 p.m. Let's um, please. Well, I thought just, right? just to take a both this part, and we have our regularly scheduled meeting later. Do both. Yeah. So March 6th yeah. at 6 p.m. and then March 12th at 7 p.m. Yeah. Okay, well, let's make sure that the other applicants know that there is a meeting on the 6th so that they can attend and be part if we have any questions for them of the discussion. Because I think, the, as I see it, the meeting on the 6th would be for us to figure out, like, come in, know exactly, you know, uh, look at that spreadsheet, see exactly when money is coming in, have all the figures as far as, you know, uh, what we have for the year and whatnot, and for us to kind of make a plan of how we want to um, move forward for the year. And then on the meeting on the 12th, I feel like would be more of a, let's make decisions on these three events kind of thing. Right. Making nice. recommendations to council. Then. Yeah. Um, will you only be inviting people who have put in an application, or will you be inviting recipients that have put in them in the last few years. It is a, we're a public committee, so everybody's always okay. invited um, to our events. Anyone but I do know? think that we should, um, we should make it known that we are going to be having this meeting so that people, if they have comment, can come. I, I would actually like to have the other applications like ASAP so we can review them in our own time. Yes. If that's okay. Uh, that is not up to me. I do not control the Chamber of Commerce. I do not control oh, the Sasquatch oh. Festival. I do not control the bus fare. So I'm we sorry. Don't have I the assumed you already had some when you made that comment. You said they were your. Did you say you have? Yes, I received Sasquatch today. Okay. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce. You have the old pass mm -hmm. that's being revised. Oh, then I not. don't know how long it will take them to revise their application. That's fine. But yeah, let's give them a um, whatever you do a heads up if we know it's coming. If you don't mind reaching out to Michelle uh, to let her know about the she maybe she yeah, she left. Oh, so so it sounds like we we could uh, at the very least review also the Sasquatch festival which, since you have it in hand. Yeah, and there may be more by then. I may yeah. receive something from 
uh, community festival association and receive something from various arts councils. You may have ten. Yeah. Um, and for anybody else who's here, if you'd like to get your applications in, <laughs> we would love to review them. <laughs> It's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, cool, great ideas going on. Yes. Um, do, do we do we vote on having that meeting, or or we just set it up? I think it's we just do it, right? Yes, yeah, procedural. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. Well, anybody else have any? So both, so both the next two meetings and our still public meetings and open. And all, we, yeah, all, all of our meetings. meetings. Okay, I didn't know if you were going to have a special work session. Is that what you were looking at? Yeah. We're not really allowed to have non-public. Even our work sessions would be public. Okay. Um. So, it's, yeah. Um. Linda? Are you in public comment now? Or? Yes, please. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. It's been quite an evening of a conversation and... The way it's developed, I really compliment all of you for thinking all of these things through. And I jotted down a note as soon as, pardon me, Kelly spoke about a uh, a topic I was going to bring up, which is have a strategy, develop a budget, and as a committee, what do you want to see happen in town? You know, and be thinking ahead of time, where are we going with this? Where is the development needed? How do you communicate with all of these people? Like, will Summit challenge the Oregon 200? Those events, uh, Oregon 200 was new and it came to town. Uh, Triple Summit has frequently asked for money. So it is hard to get enough chicken nuggets on the table for everybody. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but anyway, good job. That's all. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I just want to thank y'all for reviving this committee. Clearly, yeah. it's cool that we, uh, you know, obviously a lot of 10 other rural, you know, towns get this money, and we seem to be the most active about it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks for joining. So they can actually deliberate, and you can get recommendations. And there are two open seats on this committee, if anyone would like to. Sure. Yes. Yep. We will. Set you up there. Come yeah. on. Come on. I thought about it, but I feel like it would be somewhat of a conflict of interest. You can <laughs> vote on, on just after the money you get. Well, well from every, every decision. Yeah. 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 And make everyone feel like that way. And with how <laughs> small our town is, it's, you know, yeah. the rivers that go around. Well, thank you, everybody. Meeting thank adjourned. You. I feel like there is a rule somewhere on this committee that if you're on the committee, you can't ask for an Or in your event, you have to refuse yourself. It's like county. You can't vote on a raise for the fire department if you are the fire department.